Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. In today's episode, I am going to be answering a question that I received on Instagram last week in an Instagram question box. Here's the question. My husband really resists oral, but sex has been painful for me. He's really rough. I spoke up and there's been no change. This question has a lot to it. So this episode is jam packed. Let's get into it. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, the sex and intimacy podcast for Catholic women. My name is Ellen Holloway, and I am a Catholic speaker and coach who's on a mission to help you actually enjoy and desire good, holy sex with your spouse. So I first want to talk about painful sex. I'm going to go a little out of order of this question here, but the woman mentioned sex has been painful for me. If that is the case for you, if sex is painful for you, you have to stop as soon as you feel pain. It is not okay to push through pain. One, that's going to only make sex more painful in the future because pain with sex, pain in your vulva area actually is not just a physical pain. It also is very connected to your brain. And so what happens if you push through pain is that your brain then associates sex with pain and it makes the whole process of sex more painful and it makes the healing process even harder. And this is what we see in cases of vaginismus is that vaginismus is any pain with penetration. And acute vaginismus, actually, there's no possibility of penetration because the muscles have spasmed in such a way that it makes penetration impossible or makes penetration really, really painful. And vaginismus is not just this physical reaction. It is kind of equally a mental issue that is going on that's creating this muscle spasm. So a lot of times what happens in healing with vaginismus is it's this two-sided approach. We need to not only heal physically, sometimes that's done with dilator work or just different pelvic floor exercises, but then it also, there's a lot of healing that needs to happen on the other side. There is mental healing that needs to be done. We need to heal our relationship with sex, our understanding of sex. And so the same issue that kind of comes up with vaginismus, like this, this applies to any pain with sex is that your brain, if you are experiencing pain with sex, your brain is associating pain with sex. And then it becomes even harder to get into a place of no pain with sex. So it's so important, it's so important for you as the woman, if you are feeling pain at any point, you have to say something and stop immediately. There are, there's no, like, there's no reason ever to continue on with sex if it's painful. Like, and typically the pain is going to come from that intercourse portion of sex. Now, it might be something like vaginismus that you have, and that's probably going to take a little bit more in depth healing. But it also likely, In more cases than not, if you're having just minor pain with sex, you know, minor to kind of medium pain, a lot of times that has to do with inadequate arousal. So one of the like benchmark shortest amount of times that I recommend for foreplay is 10 minutes. Your female body literally needs at least 10 minutes to become aroused enough for intercourse. What arousal is doing is not just mentally getting you prepared for sex. That's actually like the least of what it's doing. What arousal is actually doing to your body is it's preparing your vaginal canal for a penis. It is widening the opening of your vaginal canal and it is lengthening the vaginal canal itself. The cervix is actually rising a little bit, and the vaginal canal is lengthening. If you're experiencing pain with sex because you are not fully aroused, it's because your vaginal opening either hasn't opened far enough yet, or your vaginal canal hasn't lengthened enough. So 
a lot of pain with sex can either come from that initial, that penetration, and that's felt right at that vaginal entrance, similar to the ring of fire feeling if you've had a child, if you've experienced childbirth and you, and and maybe you didn't have an epidural, but there's that ring of fire that they talk about right when the baby is crowning. That's a similar, it's not going to be as painful as childbirth, but it's that, it's in that spot, that opening of the vaginal canal. And then the other time that is really common to feel pain with sex is if the penis bumps up against the cervix. And that is due to, you know, maybe the vaginal canal has not lengthened enough. Now, there are other cases where just maybe the man is a little bit more well endowed, maybe the woman is just a little bit smaller. And even with proper arousal, there's still kind of that bumping up against the cervix. In that case, which is kind of a separate issue, that's not necessarily a like arousal issue. In that case, I often recommend just like woman on top positions or positions where the woman can control the depth of penetration. For now, we're just going to leave that to the side and, and continue talking about pain with sex. Okay. So I'm going to say this one more time. If you ever feel pain with sex, you have to say something and stop immediately. It's not okay to push through pain with sex. Okay. If intercourse is like just beginning and you start feeling pain, you have to say something and say, look, I can't do this. This is hurting. And you need to step back, go back to foreplay, work on your arousal level, that your the woman's arousal level. Maybe that means manual stimulation, oral stimulation. Maybe that just means going back to kissing, massage, something like that. But pain with sex is not okay. All right. Now let's talk about a next part of this question. At the beginning of this question, she said, husband really resists oral. So when it comes to sex, comfortability is one of the most important things. You and your spouse need to both be comfortable with something if you're going to do it during sex. Yes, oral stimulation can be a fantastic way to stimulate the woman. However, if your husband is uncomfortable with that, you have to respect that. That's And the same goes for the flip side of that. If you are uncomfortable with something that your husband suggests, you need to respect that. There are many ways to stimulate the vulva area and the clitoral head, the glands of the clitoris, beyond oral stimulation. Yes, oral stimulation can be great, but manual stimulation is great. You can also do stimulation with rubbing up against your husband's leg, rubbing up against the shaft of his penis can also create some good stimulation during that foreplay time. There are lots of options here that don't have to do with oral stimulation. And so that is also, you know, this is just a multifaceted question here that we're answering is we have to respect where our partner, where our spouse has discomfort. And that is because sex is more than just a physical act. Sex is a act of the whole person. We are a body soul union. That's what it means to be human. So what we do with our body matters and sex in particular, because it is the most vulnerable that two human beings can get on earth, then sex has a lot to do with that body soul connection. And if our soul, if our spirit, if our mind is not comfortable with something, is not on board with something, then it's not going to help to push through that. We end up getting a similar situation as the pain with sex, but just flipped from the other side. So we're pushing through pain. We're pushing through pain with sex can lead to more pain. Pushing through discomfort with something during sex leads to more discomfort with that thing. So what I suggest in this situation is you have brought it to your husband's attention that you would like to try oral stimulation. Or maybe it's something else, but we'll go off of the example in this question here. 
And your husband's like, I, I, I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, great. That's fine. Leave that on the table. But the conversation's not over. Because what this woman is saying is that sex has been painful for her. There's clearly something amiss right now. And it's likely that she is not getting adequately aroused during foreplay. So just because your spouse doesn't want to do something that you've suggested, that doesn't mean that the conversation is over. Now it's time for you guys to communicate about what might work, right? So in the case of this woman who asked this question, oral sex, we need to set that aside for now. Maybe at a future time, you can bring it back up and talk more about it. But right now, the husband clearly said he, he's resistant to it, is the words that she said. Okay, let's talk about manual stimulation. Let's talk about different ways that we can work through foreplay. Let's talk about different ways that arouse the woman. Okay, looking at what her brakes are, what her accelerators are, what arouses her and what turns her off. And have a deep discussion about those and come up with a plan for foreplay the next time that you come together for sex. And maybe that plan is, well, let's let's try manual stimulation this next time. And let's see how that works. And then ideally, we're also communicating in the moment. If something's not working, then you say something that, that this is not arousing me enough, right? And what's really important here in this particular situation of this question is that if sex is painful, we need to allow the woman in this situation to be the one that transitions the couple to intercourse because she's the one who will know when she's aroused enough to give it a try. So that needs to be something that's part of this conversation as well is, look, sex has been painful. I can't do that pain thing because it's only going to make it worse and it's only going to potentially cause more pain in the future. So I need like, let's figure out a signal that I'll give you when I'm ready to transition to intercourse or let's, you know, we'll talk about it and I'll, I'll say where I'm at or maybe you can ask me if I'm ready. But when it has to do with, when it's pain that has to do with arousal, the woman really needs to be communicating her arousal level or she needs to be the one that is the one that actually transitions the couple into intercourse from that foreplay time. And something that we as women often get stuck in our heads about this foreplay time is, oh my gosh, I'm taking too long. I'm taking too long to get aroused. Okay, first off, if you start telling yourself that, that you're taking too long to get aroused, you're immediately going to like jump back five steps on your arousal curve. So please like stop telling yourself that, ladies. It's going to take how long it takes. And that is okay. And maybe that is also a conversation that you need to have with your spouse is that arousal, it's going to take some time. And I don't know how long it's going to take, but I just need you to kind of be along for the ride. Here's the thing, ladies, is that foreplay is fun. Foreplay is really fun for both you and your husband. So I can pretty much guarantee that if you guys need to spend another 20 minutes in foreplay, like that's fun. That foreplay, in the case if it's if you need a long amount of foreplay, I highly encourage couples to really almost like 98% Focus on the woman's arousal because that is a long time for a man. His arousal curve is going to be a lot shorter than that. That's just biologically typical is that the man's arousal curve is shorter. Now, there are cases, you guys have messaged me on Instagram about this, like there are cases where it's flipped. I typically on this podcast, I just talk about what is typical. If it's flipped, then flip it for you if you need to. And so if if you as a woman need more like that 20, 30 minutes of foreplay, or even longer than that, that is completely okay. It is well within the normal range. And something that you as a couple just need to kind of recognize there is that 
that foreplay then should really be focused on the woman's arousal and not so much on the man's arousal because through foreplay, through arousing you, that is likely going to be enough to have him aroused when it's time to come together for intercourse. Really quick before we get on with the rest of the episode, I just wanted to ask you that if this podcast has blessed you in any way or you've learned something from this podcast, would you please rate and review this podcast? The reviews in particular really help people find this podcast and benefit from it. So I would be so grateful if you would rate and review the podcast. All right. The next part that I want to talk about this question, I'm going to read it out loud again so you guys are with me, is husband really resists oral, but sex has been painful for me. So we've kind of covered those two. He's really rough. Spoke up, no change. All right. So if the pain is coming from like not enough arousal and also this combination of much more rough sex, rough thrusts, then this couple, and if this is the case for you as well, you need to switch to a position where the woman has control. You need to switch to a woman on top position or something where really strong thrusts just aren't really possible. Okay, so sideline positions can be really good for this because there's not as much like leverage for the man to have like very, very rough thrusts. And you know, there's there's one thing, of course, asking your husband to be less rough. But I, I know for some men that in the moment, it, it's kind of hard to like tone it down. And so this is why I often really suggest is to switch to a position that's going to kind of force him to tone it down. The lotus position can be very good for this. Woman on top. So, you know, more of like a cowgirl position or just reverse missionary those positions are going to give the woman more of the control or it's just going to like kind of pull back on the ability for like deep rough thrusting and i think that that will really help in this situation so that's actually just a really easy change to make is just switch up the position that you're using as well as making sure that you're fully aroused All right. And then the last part of this question that I want to address, and I did do a whole podcast episode about this like several months ago, and it was just about communicating. But she ends this question with spoke up, no change. If there's no change after you've said something, then it's time to say something again. When it comes to sex, there's no such thing as a one and done conversation. This is a squeaky wheel gets clean situation. Because if you say something once and nothing changes, then you're just going to get frustrated with each other because maybe your husband forgot. Maybe he didn't really realize how much it actually meant to you. Maybe he didn't understand fully what you were talking about, right? But then you're over here going, I told him, I told him once and nothing changed. So every single time, you need to speak up. If sex is painful, you need to speak up and remind him, hey, we need to spend more time in foreplay. I need to be the one that transitions us to intercourse. I was not ready yet, and I I cannot push through pain right now. We need to step back. We need to go back to foreplay. You need to bring this up in conversation regularly. One of the things that Kathleen and I suggest quite quite a bit on this podcast is talking to your spouse every single day about sex. Like set aside five minutes, five minutes before you go to bed, five minutes first thing in the morning where you just know that you're going to talk about sex because sex is a deeply important part of your relationship and it's something that you should be talking about. And if you are regularly talking about sex, then there's less of a chance of these conversations about sex to become really volatile and explosive because you'll know, okay, well, we didn't really address this fully today, but that's okay because we're going to talk again tomorrow and I'm going to bring it back up again tomorrow, right? So it doesn't have to be this like, I have to get everything out in this one conversation right now and, you know, and not having a conversation until things literally boil over and like have to come out. 
So start talking, start today, start talking every day about sex. And if there is something that needs to change in your sexual relationship, especially if it has to do with pain, especially, or like adequate arousal, right? If there is something that needs to change in your sexual relationship, you keep talking about it until it changes. That is the only way it's going to happen. Because if you only talk about something once, then your spouse has no way of knowing how really important it is to you. But if you are constantly bringing it up, it's going to make more sense how important it is. And this is not because your spouse doesn't care about you. It's because this particular topic isn't at all important to them. And so it's not that they don't care. It's just that their level of understanding of how important this is, is like zero. And you're up here at like 98. And so if you continue to bring it up, then it'll start to make sense. Oh, this is actually something that you care about. This is actually something that's really important. Because think about any other topic. Let's say that it was really important for you that your family took a family vacation to Disneyland in a year. It's really important to you that this happens. Are you going to bring it up one time and then never speak about it again? No. You're going to talk about it until you have the flights booked, until you have the tickets bought, until you know which hotel you're staying at. You're going to research it. You're going to have conversations with um, other families who have gone to Disneyland. You are going to be reading blogs about it. You're going to be texting articles to your husband about this potential Disneyland trip. You're going to be doing so many things because this is so important to you. But now let's flip it. Let's say it's like not that important. And it's just, it, oh, it would be really cool if we went to Disneyland next year. Wouldn't that be fun? And you bring that up to your husband and he's like, yeah, that would be fun. But if it's not that important to you, like that might be the only time you talk about it. And maybe you go or maybe you don't go. But if something's really important to you, you, you keep at it. You don't just mention it one time and then not do anything about it. All right. This episode is why I did not answer this question on Instagram because it took me 20 minutes to answer this question because there was a lot to it. But to sum it up, I want to go back through, I'm going to read through this question and I'm just going to quickly sum up what we talked about. Okay, so here's the question. Husband really resists oral, but sex has been painful for me. He is really rough, spoke up, no change. All right, so first off, if there is something that one spouse is uncomfortable with in sex, that has to be respected. And you need to have a conversation about what would be comfortable instead. If sex is painful, you need to stop immediately. That pain very likely has to do with your arousal level. And so that might just mean stopping and stepping back and focusing on arousal more. And then also just really focusing on making sure that there is adequate arousal before you even attempt intercourse the next time that you have sex. If your husband is really rough and that is too much for you, one, arousal level may be at play here, but with when it comes to like really rough, of course you need to say that and you need to talk about it, but also changing positions to limit the ability of like rough, deep, hard thrusts is a great option here because that's something that's really easy to do. There are some easy positions that you can switch to things like women on top positions or side laying positions or like Lotus where you're seated facing each other positions. And then if you have talked about something to your spouse and nothing has changed, then that just means it's time to talk about it again. If you, if something needs to change in your sex life, you need to keep talking about it until it changes. That's how it works for anything that is important to you is you keep talking about it until something changes. 
Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at Charting Toward Intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes. Until next time. Oh,